So I've kind of thought about making a full Pac-Man guide before, however I realized it would take an extremely long time to make a video that really does the character justice and goes over all the intricacies of his moves. So instead, for now at least, I think it's probably more valuable to make a pretty simple guide on essentially how Pac works at a fundamental level, especially since a lot of new players focus on learning all of his complex tricks instead of how to actually create openings for those tricks. And hey, I know Neutral is way less exciting and cool than Apple Gun, but trust me, learning the basics of Pac-Man will help out a lot once you start playing the character more competitively. So in terms of neutral, it's important to understand what Pac-Man is specifically looking to go for in this part of the game. Pac-Man is his owner at heart, and while he can get some pretty strong combos off of his normals, he's much better off at trying to set up a wall with Bonus Fruit, Hydrant, and Trampoline, which are ridiculously good at area control and limiting options from your opponent. However, that doesn't mean you should always be playing campy. The really cool thing about Bonus Fruit is that not only is it a great zoning projectile, but the higher charge fruits can actually lead into combos and big punishes. At low percents, Galaxian is the main fruit you want to be aiming to charge to, since if you hit it, it can combo to a bunch of aerials and do around 30% at least depending on the character. Now it's probably a good time to mention that if you've seen any top Pac-Man play, you've probably seen them catch fruits like Galaxian and throw them after. There's a reason for this. Throwing most fruit except key is normally frame 19, but if you have it in your hand it becomes a frame 8 move that can also be used directly out of shield to punish attacks. Of course, there are also reasons to use fruit directly from charge, I made a video on this a while ago that goes over in advanced tech relating to this topic, but essentially it's a lot easier to combo off of fruit if you throw them from your hand. Once you get past about 60%, Galaxian starts becoming less useful and the fruit you want to start looking for is Bell, since it stuns opponents and combos into your smash attacks letting you not kills. If your opponent is at 120 or so and isn't dead yet, you can start prioritizing key to land kills, and then past then you can start going for Melon or Apple. Of course, these aren't the only fruits you should go for. Orange and Key are really good quick zoning tools, Apple can pressure from platforms to sometimes combo, Melon is a really good area denial tool since it moves so slowly, and Strawberry and Cherry can be really good get off me tools if you don't have anything else charged up. It's up to you as a player to use what fruits you see fit for a given situation, but the high priority fruits are definitely worth charging towards. Also pro tip, if you can't find any openings for these fruits, just charge up to key instead so you have access to a really versatile zoning tool that can be used out of combos and punish unsafe attacks from a distance. One of the main challenges of Pac-Man is finding the ideal opportunities to charge fruit and creating the space necessary to. This requires playing defensively since while it is possible to win neutral off of your normals alone, most of them kind of function as quick get off me tools that exist to make space to set up walls and don't really lead into much, except fair that moves busted. Thankfully, he has access to Hydrant and Trampoline for this. Having Hydrant on the ground not only gives you access to another projectile that can be launched in a ton of different ways, but it also eats most projectiles on the ground, disrupts your opponent's spacing with water, and forces them to commit to either attacking it, jumping over, or rolling when approaching from behind, all of which can be punished if red. You can also use Hydra to cover yourself while catching fruit if you're hit with an attack first. Trampoline basically deletes a chunk of the stage and forces your opponent into the air if they want to approach you. This move single-handedly wins you matchups against characters with bad air speeds like Luigi, Kirby, and Little Mac. You can also charge fruit if your opponent is in the air off stage, but you shouldn't prioritize getting fruit and letting your opponent return a neutral for free. It's important to have traps to set up while charging fruit. It can also be worthwhile to go off stage to charge fruit, since Pac-Man's recovery is really hard to mess with and it's scary for a lot of characters to commit to edge guarding you. Alright, so now you have Fruit Charge and know how to play campy with your other moves, how do you get big punishes in with these fruits? First off, as I mentioned before, Hydrant and Trampoline, as well as some of the more standard zoning tools you have like Orange and Melon, are really good at forcing your opponent into less than favorable situations, especially if you have the lead. If they jump over your setups, anti-air them with Bell, or wait for them to land and use Galaxian to get a combo going, are they challenging your anti-airs with their own aerials, get Fruit into your hand and punish them out of shield or just use air? Are they always using laggy attacks to one-shot Hydrant, literally hit them with whatever you want while they're in lag? Are they shielding all of your projectiles you launch at them, throw slow projectile and punish their shield with a grab combo. God forbid they hit Hydrant with a weak attack and you throw Galaxian at it and do like 50% because your opponent was being a potato. It's that easy. Now despite what you might think from Twitch chat, Pac-Man can actually play up close seasonally well. I kinda haven't talked about his normals up until now, and that's because there isn't really much to say about most of them. For the most part, they're all pretty quick and don't really combo into anything, but are decently safe and good at making space, despite not having the best range. Jab is Pac-Man's fastest ground move at frame 3, it's pretty standard but not really safe on shield. Forward tilt and down tilt are pretty quick as well, reach deceptively far, and can actually be used decently well for shield pressure against characters with bad out of shield options. Dash attack has basically no ending lag and combos against players that don't realize that they can just DI away, and not tilt does and hit ground opponents but is actually kind of good at catching landings. Nothing super outstanding but Pax aerials are kind of a different story. Nair and Fair are both absurdly fast, lead into combos, can be safe on shield, and Fair in particular launches at a ridiculously unfair angle that can create tech chases and lead into massive punishes if your opponent misses their tech. These moves can both combo into each other, grab and other aerials, and Fair in particular can lead to up air, jab lock combos, or like literally anything if they miss their tech. These are your two main moves for facing at close range since they're so safe and have so much combo potential. Technically Bear is decent as well but it's not really safe, still worth looking 
sneaking into though, especially at kill percent. Down air is also a decent aerial mix up for approaching since it's quick and can anti air people. However, it's not really safe on shield either. Really, Pac Man's close range boxing game gets its biggest strength from having fruit in your hand since you can basically turn into Diddy Kong with banana from Smash 4, and we all remember how scary that was. Dash's shield can actually be a decent way to approach and play close range as Pac Man since you can punish a lot of moves on shield with Bell, Galaxian, and Apple in particular and get insane reward off of them. Another pro tip fruit throws out of shield are frame 8, so if you look at shield safety data, any move that's minus 8 or worse on shield can be punished with a Galaxian or Apple combo or Bell to forward smash for kills, and the frame advantage becomes even better if you parry. So Pac Man's close quarter combat game isn't too bad. The only problem is his approach tools aren't the best, but that's not really an issue when you can just play campy all the time. The best way around this is to set projectiles at mid range to try to give your opponent less breathing room to punish you. Really though, you should only be going in at close range once your opponent has limited stage control or is already in disadvantage or you're looking for a kill setup. Also speaking of advantage, let's talk about Pac-Man's advantage state. To sum it up, while Pac-Man's advantage state isn't good in the sense that he can overwhelm people in the air with his juggling capabilities, he is insanely good at keeping people in corners and limiting their stage control with his projectiles, which I kind of talked about before, as well as edge guarding and ledge trapping. This can get really complicated really fast, so I'll keep it basic. If your opponent has a super horizontal recovery or likes to recover high, use orange to cover it, catch their landing, or use fair, which also is ridiculously broken off stage because it combos into itself and can carry people into the blast zone. If your opponent is recovering low in a really linear way, drop off ledge and down air them, which will probably launch them out of their recovery distance. If they go really low, like below the stage and recover up the lip of the stage low, drop Hydrant on them. I've literally won so many undeserved games off of people getting stage spiked at 50 by Hydrant and then falling out of recovery range. This works pretty well on characters with bad recoveries, but there are some characters you can't really mess with off stage like Pika and Inkling for instance, so ledge trapping them can be a better option. The extreme basics of ledge trapping are to put a Hydrant or a lingering projectile right above ledge to cover neutral getup, getup attack and jump, and cover the roll yourself. A really good strat here is to throw a bell about this far from the ledge, pick it up, and then drop it down because so many players don't realize if they neutral get up here, they literally die. In terms of juggling, you can kind of chase people with up airs, but Pac-Man doesn't really have the best range on it, so it's much better to catch landings with fruit, pivot grabs, or my personal favorite, your super disjoint smash attacks that people don't respect nearly as much as they should. Alright, so that's cool, but suppose you mess up and get in disadvantage. You're probably fine, Pac-Man's decently good at getting out of it. In terms of getting comboed, a lot of people forget that Pac-Man's Nair is frame 3 and that you can just press the A button out of anything that isn't true. Of course, you don't want to abuse this, but Nair is an extremely good combo breaking tool. Pac-Man doesn't really have any aerials that are super good for landing, but he does have Hydrant which goes directly downward and can punish people for trying to juggle you. There are some memes about how much Pac players abuse this to get out of disadvantage, and it's honestly true. It's your only good landing option, and if you don't want to get juggled, you have to get good at learning how to mix up when you use it. If you get knocked off stage, you're probably fine since Pac-Man has so many different recovery options, just don't be predictable because your opponent can deactivate side B and trampoline by hitting them, so be aware of And that's about it. TLDR, Pac-Man thrives off playing defensively and using his projectiles to zone people out, while charging up moves like Galaxian, Bell, and Key that can lead into a ton of damage and reward, and then going in and using those moves to punish people for choosing unsafe options. In terms of killing, if you don't land a Bell, F Smash, or Gimp your opponent, you might be in trouble, but you have Key, Apple, Melon, Bear, Back Throw, and Downer off stage to compensate. Just know it might be a struggle. Try to push advantage by limiting your opponent's stage control and keeping them in positions where they don't have that many safe options like off stage or on the ledge. And if you're even in disadvantage, drop Hydrant, mix up your recovery, and remember that Nair can break you out of a lot of combos. This character is really complicated and I feel this guide oversimplified a lot of things about the character, but hopefully it gives you a decent starting point to learn. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. I have a lot of cool stuff coming on the way and I have like three videos in the works that you can expect soon. For now, be sure to subscribe for that or if you just want to see more Pac-Man content. Comment video suggestions if you have any down below and I'll see you all next time. Time.